Hello and welcome. This is Belba Tress here from Tress Academic. And today I want to tell you my story, why I teach PhD students how to succeed. This is also the audio of our weekly blog post number 39. Check it out at the Smart Academics blog. Have you ever come across a PhD student who has been doing a PhD for a long, long time? Or do you know one who gave up altogether? I bet you have. And so have I. My personal experience with cases like this is closely related why today I teach PhD students to complete their PhD successfully. I've been doing this work for 13 plus years already and I believe if you know what I discovered while doing my own PhD, you'll understand what finally motivated me to set up a course to help PhD students deal better with their projects. I want to share a really funny story from my own PhD time. This gets to the core of how my entire career developed and the origin of my role as a professional advisor for scientists today. It'll help you to understand why I am on a mission to help PhD students every day. And of course, there's also a big and bold message for you in this story as well. You can learn how to be successful with your PhD. Every PhD student can pick up the skills necessary to deal with their problems and increase the chances of timely and successful completion. But you need to reach out, speak up and get help from those with experience. I'll come back to that at the end of the post, because by then you'll likely understand what I mean on a deeper level. So take a moment and listen to my story. I've got to get back in time when I was a PhD student myself. In the second year of my PhD, I transferred from Heidelberg University in Germany to Roskilde University in Denmark. Initially, this was planned as a one-year stay abroad. But since working conditions at Roskilde University were so fabulous for PhD students, I stayed there until the end. I came into a department in a group of five other PhD candidates, making us a group of six altogether. And for those of you who know me a bit better, or in case you were wondering, my husband Gunther was also pursuing his PhD at Roskilde University at that time, but he started in a different PhD program. So that's a different story, right? So back to my group. All the others in my group had started the PhD process before me. They were all employed as PhD students. I had a scholarship which brought some prestige, but came with little money attached. Some of the other candidates in the group were financed through a large third-party national research project. So I had many reasons to admire them. The exchange they had with other research institutes, the relevance of what they did and their contribution to a bigger research initiative. And also because they were further in the PhD process already. Being around them, I felt a mixture of excitement and intimidation and I thought I'd better step up my game a bit to be able to keep up. Over the next year, I kept my focus on my project, but squinting with one eye on the interesting research they were doing. We had occasional exchanges, like attending courses together in our PhD program or talks at the university or casual chats in the department. So we went from loosely following each other's progress to becoming colleagues and friends. It then came as a total surprise to me one morning 
when I arrived at my office in the Institute to see Trine, one of the other PhD candidates, clearing out her office. She was packing everything down into boxes. I asked her what was going on and she sat down and told me that she had quit her PhD and was seeking a job outside academia. After discussions with her supervisor, she had come to the realization that she would never be able to finish her PhD or produce a dissertation in the remaining months of her contract. While she had clearly made some progress and done some fieldwork up until then, it was not enough to merit a PhD degree in the end. She had not delimited her project clearly enough, nor organized her workload and had lost too much time with work outside her project and that did not contribute to her PhD thesis in the end. Perhaps even more surprising to us others, we had no idea she had been struggling. If anything, she was one of the stars of our department. How had we not known? Could things have been any different if she had reached out? Trina's departure came as a real shock to me. She was abandoning her PhD. I'd never even heard of that before. You may think that's pretty naive, but I've at least not given it any thought. After all the hard work she had put into it, so many months of reading and studying down the drain, all that empirical work she had done already, and now it would never be completed. And she had everything going for her, funding, a good network, a nice supervisor. I felt so sorry for her. And at the same time, I had a twisting feeling in the pit of my stomach. Why did this happen? What were the reasons that this had gone so wrong for her? But the story does not end there. Because from my group of six PhD candidates, I was the only one who completed the PhD within the regular time. One other PhD student completed five or six years later at a time when I had already done a postdoc and worked as a researcher. The other four dropped out one after the other. One of them did remain at the university working as a technician. I would never have predicted this outcome at the beginning of my stay at Roskill University. The shock of that first experience with Trine stuck with me and it never left me again. And when the others followed her, it only compounded my realization that behind every struggling PhD student, behind each failed project, there is a personal story as well. I thought there must be a way to avoid so much misery and hardship, so much wasted time, energy, disappointment. And my experience is far from unique. It's a serious problem for research institutes and funding agencies on a massive scale that projects are delayed or never get completed at all. While our Roskilde group of six is not representative, of course, we know that we are not alone in our experience of having candidates who complete late or drop out. So if you want to have more insights into completion rates, go to the Smart Academics blog post number 39 
Scroll down right to the end. There's the references section and I included a few links there to statistics evidencing that. So as an academic, I started to become really curious about the reasons why PhD candidates dropped out or finished late. I thought there must be a better way to deal with this. There must be a way to show PhD students how they can complete successfully. Of course, it's normal to struggle with a PhD to some degree. And rest assured, mine was no bed of roses either. Some struggle more, some less. Some sooner, some later. For some PhD students, the problems with their projects become so serious that they develop mental health issues, that they drop out. For others, it is just, inverted commas here, a temporary struggle with the project, equipment or a time crunch where they manage to bounce back and finish their projects. Still, it is often a hard and painful process to sort out all the problems on your own. So what I discovered after investigating the reasons that PhD students struggle is that the problems are not unique. They are not unique at all. Nearly every PhD candidate experiences the same typical problems over and over again. Now, don't get me wrong. You are very special, you are unique, and so is your project and your research. But the struggles that you face are not. If you speak to people who deal with many PhD students, like experienced PhD supervisors, graduate school coordinators, or advisors who counsel PhD students, they will confirm this observation. There are just a handful of problems that nearly every PhD student encounters. What had made me complete and Trina stop ultimately was not the quality of the research, but how we organized the process, how we organized getting our research and PhD work done. It was the difference how we organized our project, how we set goals, how we managed our time. It was not about our scientific skills. It was about a set of crucial and decisive complementary skills. If I've piqued your curiosity now and you want to know more about the typical problems of PhD candidates, Go to the Smart Academics blog post number 39. Once more, scroll down to the end. And there you can download our popular free expert guide. Five reasons why PhD students delay and how to avoid. So not only will you get more insights into the typical struggles, but you'll also get a whole bunch of valuable hints on how to work through these. The fact that there are typical problems runs contrary to what most PhD students themselves believe. As a PhD student, you experience your problems on an individual basis. I know that. You think it's related to your specific situation, to your specific project to your supervisor, the way you set up your research and the way you work. And you probably don't have that much exchange with other PhD students. And if you do, your struggles with your PhD, that's nothing that you would normally discuss openly. And because you experience your problems as unique to you, you are reluctant to reach out and look for help. But knowing what the main struggles of PhD candidates are and that they are rather commonplace means we can do something about it. 
And that is the very reason that as a trained researcher, I started teaching PhD students how to deal with the main challenges they experience. And for more than a decade now, I've been happily on a mission to help PhD students and teach them the skills they need to bring their projects successfully to the finish line. Because what makes you successful in the end can be learned. It's not magic. Shall I repeat that? What makes you successful in a PhD can be learned. It's not magic. Let me share a few comments from PhD students who attended my course and went through the learning experience. And they confirm in their own words what I just mentioned. Here's one from a PhD student in marine biology. I wish I had taken this course earlier in my PhD. It would have saved me so much time. Or another one, PhD student in aerospace engineering. I am applying the techniques that I learned in Bebel's course every single day. Hooray! It has changed the way I look at my PhD. I feel so much more in control now. Another one from a PhD student from neuroscience. The things I learned in this course are unbelievably motivating and have helped me to forge a way through the problems with my project. A PhD student from immunology. Bebel's course was an enlightening experience for me. After the course, I no longer hid from the problems of my PhD, like an ostrich that buries its head in the sand. But I started behaving like a dragon and faced my PhD head on to finish on time. The course reminded me of my true potential and goals in my PhD and in my life. And another one, PhD student from archaeology. This course gave me a completely different perspective on my PhD. It dispelled the myth that the PhD is meant to be a struggle, has to be stressful, is unmanageable and not compatible with a normal life. I gained the knowledge and skills that a PhD can be made easier with proper techniques and tools. I strive for a summa cum laude in my PhD and I'd give that mark to the course as well. So hear what they are saying? Success can be learned. Throughout the last decade, I've taught several thousand PhD students face to face. Help is there. It's all around you, but you've got to make the first step and reach out. Don't let yourself suffer in silence. Reach out to your colleagues, friends or supervisors about your PhD issues so they can lend a helping hand. We at Tress Academic are always trying to make things easier for our PhD student community. And we are within reach for everyone. So get in contact with us on our social media platforms, or just drop us an email. Divorce yourself from the idea that you are the only one who is struggling or the only one who suffers during their PhD. Know that every PhD student can work on their problems. Everyone can improve things for the better. But you need to reach out, speak up, and get help. Stick with us, because this is exactly what we do. We help PhD students complete their project more easily and successfully. And I've just made our content calendar for the next few months, 
And I tell you, there is so much great stuff that we can't wait to share with you. There are real rewards for PhD students who realize that their problems are not unique and desire to learn how to complete their PhD successfully. It's not only okay to reach out for help. It's what smart students do. And it'll make your PhD all the better.